So let me get this straight. Why is it that all the other AV units can go berserk, but then AV unit one can grow limbs? I mean, isn't that a bit too much? I mean, the right. un the un core is able to regenerate limbs if the pilot is on awakening mode. Right. But I honestly feel like Oscar's is the best because it could turn into a tiger. It can, you're lying. It can't turn into a tiger. It could go into berserk mode. Yes, what? I can. Yeah, yes. It could turn into a tiger. Angel spotted in District 4. What's that noise? Gypsy all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Report to launch. Bay 2. Pilot 1, ready for deployment. Pilot 2, ready for deployment. Initiate drop in 3, 2, 1. Initiating startup sequence. Ready? Let's do it. Welcome to Import Legacy on the U channel. With the upcoming release of Pacific Rim Uprising, some people will want to see the first Pacific Rim so they can be caught up on the plot. What about where storyline actually comes from? Wait, you mean who came up with the idea for the movie? Well, that's easy, Guillermo del Toro. Well, nah, I mean, every movie has a genre surrounding it, from horror to comedy to action and romance. So then action? Yes and no. You're right, it's full of action and adventure, but you're wrong because the genre I was referring to was mecha. Whoa, I've seen mecha anime before, but I can't believe it's evolved that much. I mean, where did it even begin? Well, let me show you. And before we get started, you should know that there are a ton of mechs out there. So we'll be covering only our favorites, and more importantly, the ones that have had the biggest impact to anime fans and the genre as a whole. Now, let's go. The first official mecha began with Tetsujin 28 Go in 1963. The idea was simple, humans piloting a robot to fight against evil which became the primary focus for all mechas today. It basically goes without saying that without Tetsujin, there will be no mecha. Mostly, for military reasons, his ideas came from Japan's post-war anxiety at the time, which is why it can be said that the themes and idea of weaponized technology correlates from Japan's feelings of war at the time. Which is true if you see these ideas and how they're shown in the mecha of today. As the genre went into the 70s, a new subgenre emerged called Super Robot. A good idea of this is Mazinger Edition Z, The Impact, and Grandizer, where their designs were perfect for selling merchandise, but on the screen, the robots were rarely rationalized. It was more about the spectacle rather than the mechanics which sprouted these incredible designs and created a very iconic image for the genre. Next is the most important anime in the entire genre, Mobile Suit Gundam. This was the anime that changed how Mecha was viewed forever. This entire franchise did not only keep the idea of good versus evil in giant robots, but it incorporated other themes like character conflicts, emotions, and romance. This series started the creation of a new toy line in Japan called Gumpla, where the Gundams from TV show could, would come in a pack that people could build paint, wire, and whatever, whatever else they want to do. It's so popular that it's even created other series with the, within the franchise. These popular titles include, in no particular order, Mobile Suit Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed, Mobile Suit NC Destiny, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn, Mobile Suit Gundam Zero Zero, Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded, Orphans, Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. <sighs> Jesus. You sure that's all of them? Well, there's more, but those are literally the only ones I could remember. I won't lie to you, those are the ones I can remember too. Getting back on track, we have the famous Macross in 1982. Like Mobile Suit Gundam, this anime gives fans the battle of good versus evil, with one difference. The mechs can transform... That's not at all what I meant. I meant that they can transform into jets. It's like piloting an X-Wing and a mech all in one. If you want an anime that can compete with AAA titles like Mobile Suit Gundam and Macross, then look no farther than what most people believe to be the godfather of mecha, 
Neon Genesis Evangelion. It has the deepest character conflicts, appeals to a more mature audience like most mechas, and it takes place in Tokyo 3, a futuristic Tokyo where their entire city has been turned into a fortress to withstand attacks from angels. Then you had Tengen Topa Garen Laga. This mecha expresses the value of brotherhood in the face of danger, and as long as you believe in yourself, you can overcome any obstacle. This gives you a compelling plotline, great character motivations, and one of the greatest one-liners in anime history. And let's not forget Star Driver, a mecha that's ahead of its time because all of the battles take place in zero time, literally. Time stops when they're about to fight. Basically, the hero can pilot a mech with his body, and the villains pilot their mechs mechanically. But as far as the rest of the anime goes, it's a unique change of pace than what we're used to seeing in terms of how a mech is piloted. And characters, since they're all in high school, both heroes and villains. Alright, so we covered how mecha and anime has evolved. What does this have to do with the import legacy? Well, it's simple. One of our supervisors once said, there's no such thing as an original story but there is such thing as an original way of telling it. This correlates perfectly with the mecha genre, because while every one of these titles had a different plot, characters and mech, it always goes along the lines of good versus evil in the battle for humanity. You know, with all this talk about anime mecha, and the upcoming sequel of Pacific Rim, we might as well mention that the story of Pacific Rim centers around a breach in the Pacific Ocean. Wait, 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 wait. Pacific Rim? Is a movie that revolves around a port in the Pacific Ocean? Well, yeah. Bruh. Anyway, this breach allows monsters known as Kaiju, which translates to, you know, Japanese to giant monsters. The Kaiju lay a waste to everything in their path, and while missiles and tanks can kill them or harm them, it's not really enough to take them down. So the world leaders put aside their petty differences and join together to start a Jaeger program. This program started the creation of a giant mech called Jaegers, which translates in German to Hunter. With the Jaegers, they fight off the Kaiju and mount a counteroffensive to detonate, detonate a nuclear bomb inside the breach that leads to their world, but not before hearing the greatest war speech since Independence Day. Today we face the monsters that are at our door and bring the fight to them. Today we are canceling the apocalypse. <laughs> But is that the end? Find out in the upcoming film, Pacific Rim Uprising. Well, that's all the time we have today for Import Legacy. Be sure to like, follow, comment, and subscribe on the following media platforms at the U channel. And be sure to- Alert, Kaiju, category four. Spotted Back off to work. the coastline. Let's do it. Gypsy Danger Report to launch Bay Two.